All right, Jim and Michelle Fisher, thank you guys for coming back on the show today. Hi. Hi. Thanks so much for having us. All right, great. So in case you missed the first episode, Jim and Michelle came on the Travel Path podcast. They talked about their really cool story of how they retired, saved up for a while. They bought a Airstream a couple months ago and they're living life full time. So if you missed the first part, check that out. And today we're going to be talking about a destination that you guys know best. So where are we talking about? Um, we talked about it. We're going to talk about Michigan's Upper Peninsula. And in fact, uh, right around Manistique, Michigan, there's a wonderful state park up there called Indian Lake State Park uh, that we've been to a number of times. And we really, really enjoy it there. Oh, awesome. What makes that park so special for you guys? Well, so special for us is um, 30 years ago when we were married, um, we did a honeymoon trip, a camping honeymoon trip in a tent. And we ended up at Indian Lake State Park. There's a park in Wisconsin we wanted to go to. I went to as a kid. And we went there, and it was an awful experience. It rained on us all night. The raccoons broke into all of our food, and it was terrible. So we just left and then drove into Michigan's Upper Peninsula and, and stumbled across Indian Lake. And it was just a magical place for us. Um, we had this wonderful campsite. We set up our tent, and um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful area. Um, it's kind of on the upper end of Lake Michigan, but it's on its own little inland lake, Indian Lake. And then there's an adjoining state park really close to it that doesn't have camping. And that's Palms Book State Park. And there's a spring in there called Kitch Itty Kippy, which means um, land of the cold spring. And it's this absolute crystal clear spring that you get to go out on a raft and you can look down and see the trout. And because of the minerals in the water, it's all tinted this really pretty copper green. And um, it's just just amazing. And because the water is cold, it's like 45 degrees, the fish, it's almost like it's in slow motion underwater when you watch the fish. Um, but it's just a, a really nice area. It's a nice small town. There's some really nice little restaurants mm -hmm. there. Um, the last time we were there, there was a brand new Indian um, restaurant, restaurant Taj. Taj open. Oh, my gosh. The food was delicious. Just amazing. Oh, perfect. What type of, um, so obviously there's, you know, there's, a, sounds like there's a little town somewhere you can eat, some camping you can do. What other activities have you seen around in the area? Around there, that's kind of enough for us. Um, but there's um, a lot of hiking. Um, you could do bicycling around there, a lot of exploring, but especially the UP is great for hiking. It's really not a touristy type of place where you're going to go and you're going to do zip lining in water parks or anything. Uh, Michigan's Upper Peninsula is, is just you're experiencing nature and very, very beautiful nature um, up in that area. It's just stunning. People go up there, um, just generally love it. They say they had no idea Michigan was that pretty. Now to get the full experience, how many days do you think someone should plan if they're going to go vacation there? Um, I would say that you could see, um, everything probably in a week. Mm -hmm. So you really could in there, like at that one park, you know, but if you're going to experience Michigan's upper peninsula, uh, about a month, maybe even six weeks, um, it's a pretty big area. People don't realize how big the upper peninsula is and everything is quite remote and takes you a while to get from here to there, but there's, all kinds of things up there. You've got pictured rocks. You've got the Keewin or the uh, Keweenaw Peninsula, I think is what's there. Um, you've got the Sioux Locks, which is a whole lock system for freighter transportation um, through the Great Lakes. And that's right up in the Sault Ste. Marie area. Of course, the Upper Peninsula touches Canada in a number of places. You've got Lake Superior. Um, there's shipwrecks up there. Um, there's a shipwreck museum. And of course, it was in Lake Superior that the Edmund Fitzgerald sunk. Um, the song by Gordon Lightfoot and the Shipwreck Museum has a bunch of stuff dedicated because it's right at Whitefish Point, um, right where he sings about in the song. Um, so but it's just there's just so much that Quamanan waterfalls, uh, they call root beer falls because um, of the coloring, the tannins in the water. There's just so much to see in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Oh, very cool. Now, obviously, it's Michigan, so we're going to get pretty chilly in the winter. What do you think the best time of year is to visit? Summer. Definitely summer um, and all. In fact, we're planning on going and spending a month there this summer, um, kind of in the heat of summer, um, because it's fairly, it's a little cooler up there, especially if you're up near uh, Lake Superior. Uh, lake Superior is a very cold lake. Um, it's very deep. 
Yeah, um, I would say the latest would be September. The latest, but yeah. You get some beautiful fall color, but things start closing down. Very true. Now, you're not traveling with any pets. You don't have any small children. But when you've been there, is it a good time to bring your pets to this area, bring your kids? Yes, absolutely. We went there. Um, I say we honeymoon there, did an unexpected honeymoon stop there. And then years later, when we had our other camper and the kids, we went back there with the kids and we all had a great time. And again, did the Kitchitty Kippy um, thing and did some other stuff. Pretty much all Michigan State Parks are pet friendly and definitely children friendly. Mm -hmm. They usually have campground hosts and they'll do uh, crafts and different things for kids in the week. Um, or especially on the weekends. There's usually great play areas for them to play. Yes. And now you've gone and you said you've done tent camping. You've also obviously taken your first RV or camper that you had. Uh, a lot of hotel options too. Have you been up there and seen, you know, inns and hotels, bed and breakfasts? We we actually did. We did a bed and breakfast. We've done a couple hotels in that um, in the St. Ignace area, which is right as you cross into the Upper Peninsula across the Mackinac Bridge. We've done some trips there, or one motel, we say that, like a little log cabin motel, very 1950s, um, and then um, a bed and breakfast. But in the Upper Peninsula, things are a little more rustic. Don't expect a five-star motel experience or hotel experience in the UP of Michigan. Things are a little more simple. That's the charm, and that's the beauty of it. Yeah, and like you said, you're really just there to enjoy the nature of it all, right? So yes. you want to be spending your time outside. Yeah, but I would I would strongly suggest if somebody's going to be up in northern Michigan to cross that Mackinac Bridge and make then stay in the Upper Peninsula rather than the Lower Peninsula. The lower Peninsula has some beautiful places to stay as well, but if you're going to be that close, jump over and uh, it's a whole different world up there. Yeah, we have not been, but that's what I've heard. I heard it's just fantastic to go and visit. So much to do in the summer. <laughs> in the yeah. summer well if you're a skier there's some uh, michigan has some pretty good ski resorts for downhill skiing in the winter um i wouldn't do that in an rv but um you know in a in a resort area or something there's mm -hmm. some there's some really world-class um ski resorts smaller hills yeah they're hills and it's a little more icy snow not powder snow like you're going to get out in colorado or someplace or utah now, Michelle, you said that in around the September time frame, it tends to shut down. Is that literally like restaurants, hotels closing for the season, or does it just really slow down? I think it more just slows down. Mackinac Island, though, closes down. You know, things ice up, and often the, the waterway to even get to the island will freeze solid. The only way, there's people that live on the island, and sometimes the only way they can get across to the mainland is across the ice or fly off. So when things are open, do you have any favorite breakfast, lunch, dinner, tasty treat spots? No favorites, but for most people who go there, they're going to want to experience um, traditional Upper Peninsula food, and that's a pasty, um, which is like a, it's sort of like a meat pie and designed to be portable and carried. And uh, I would suggest that pretty much everybody find a place that has pasties and try one out. Oh, those sound good. They do sound good. Yeah, I've not heard, not tried or heard of that before, yeah. but I will uh, definitely try one out if I venture over there. That'll be on the list for sure. And they would use them because there's a lot of mining, a lot of iron and copper mining in the Upper Peninsula. And so the wives would make these for their husbands and they would pack them with them. And in the colder months, it would help keep them warm. And then it was a very filling and hearty meal that they could eat with their fingers because they couldn't have um, utensils or anything in the mines. And so that's kind of where pasties came from. Well, I'm glad you clarified that because I was thinking for some reason pie pizza. It was almost like a pizza, like a meat pizza, but it's not. It's almost like a shepherd's pie or chicken pot pie, but just with meat, it sounds like, potatoes and... Meat and potatoes, very hearty. And then, again, a pinched closed pastry. So kind of like a... Like an empanada? Like a pie, empanada, yeah. 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 yeah, that's what I was going to say, I but bigger. I don't <laughs> think of like a ravioli, but that's not quite right. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, but again, designed to be eaten like a fully formed up sandwich designed to be eaten with your hands. Oh, wow. That sounds good. Oh, I want one even more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right. We're going to pivot into what we call the three to one countdown. So our final three questions before we wrap up. What are three things you'd recommend people do in the Upper Peninsula? Kitchitty Kippy, for sure. What else would you want to do up there? Sunsets. Yeah. The sunsets over Indian Lake are just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So in the evening, people um, will migrate 
to, and it's a, not a big inland lake, but they'll migrate and there's actually walkways. You can stand out or platforms and watch the sunset. People do that. Are, is Pictured Rocks near there? Or is Pictured Rocks is close place? enough. You could get there, but it's it, Pictured Rocks um, is on the Lake Superior side. Um, so it'd be about an, a little over an hour drive, hour and a half drive from there. And that's worth a visit too. Yeah, um, just it's a well, gorgeous. It's it's wonderful looking from the land, but then even better if you have the opportunity to take a boat and go in the water past Picture Rocks. That's the most amazing. View. Yes, right. If someone were to have two complaints or things they wish they had considered before they visited, what would they be? Flies, black flies. Check online when the area you're going to, they're in season. Because <laughs> um, like a lot of places have where bugs hatch or whatever. And you, if you're there at that time, it could be a bad experience. Since things are remote up there and you're going to be traveling some distances, just make sure that all your equipment is in good repair. Because um, the last thing you want to do is break down on a road and then have to wait six hours for the next person to drive by and um, help you out. Yeah, really good point. And, and there's no, there's very little cell service or connectivity up there. Great. Yeah, two excellent tips. Thank you. So what is one thing you simply cannot leave this Upper Peninsula without doing? The thing that Michiganders have to see in the Upper Peninsula is Taquamanon Falls. And uh, I would suggest that. There's two sets of waterfalls. There's an Upper Falls and a Lower Falls. And it's very easy to get to when you cross over into Mackinac or off the Mackinac Bridge into the Upper Peninsula. It's just uh, about an hour up, and the town is called Paradise. That's right there. And there's actually state parks right in that area. We've not stayed at those. Oh, that town is really fun, too. Yeah. Paradise. There's a lot to do in that town and re some really good restaurants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we ate at last time we were there. It was a brand new restaurant just opened up. I think it was Wagon Wheel or something like that. I can't remember. I can't remember. Their burgers were awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. I think there's definitely enough content here for someone to plan their trip. I know we definitely would um, use this as an itinerary guide. So thank you for sharing that. We appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. And I'll put some links in the description in the show notes for everything we talked about here. And while my audience is checking out that, where can they find you guys? You can find us on YouTube as Airstreamer. And again, if you search, you probably put the at symbol in first, at and then Airstreamer. And then on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, which is now X, um, but we're all on airstreamer.life. And then our website as well, which is, of course, www.airstreamer.life. Great. Everyone, check them out. Doom and Michelle, thanks again. Thank you guys so much. We enjoyed it. Thanks Very for having much. us on.